Hello everyone, and welcome back to Farm Simulator 22. We're back here on No Man's Land with Grover Games. The last month we ended up doing quite a few different tasks. We got all our, our our all our solid manure hauled. We got our pit pumped out again for the dairy. So we're sitting pretty good on our manure management side. Right now we got we got a lot of corn to plant today. Just kind of walking here checking on the feed food situation for the cattle because we still got. 18 calves growing up in that barn. Let's see here. Yeah, and they're start they're almost halfway through their puberty, so they're they're getting there and soon we'll be we'll be producing a lot more milk, I believe. And it looks like we're almost halfway through ten of our Angus having some more calves as well, so we'll we'll probably have some more calves from the Angus by the end of this year, I would th I'm thinking. Probably that same all. Probably before December this year, I'm guessing we'll have some. But we're gonna hop into the Kubota here, and we're gonna do one quick little experiment right away this morning. So I removed that that liquid fertilizer tank. I haven't fully committed to it yet, because like I said last episode, I actually updated this planner. So hopefully, we won't have to worry about any issues with the helper not being able to plant for us if we need them to. But right now we're gonna we're gonna leave the duels on for now. I was originally gonna take them off because I didn't think we would really need them but last episode we also discovered that the Komodo was also struggling to pull that 20-foot cultivator so we might have to leave the duels on for the planter as well but first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing unfolded here and I want to see if we can get the helper to plant for us without the liquid fertilizer. And would you look at that? Looks like that update fixed it for us. Maybe. Because it's applying fertilizer. That is weird. Let's go back here. You know, it'd probably be easier for me to just drag the toolbox out here versus driving this all the way back up to the yard. That's fine. Well, I wonder if it's still sensing that the liquid fertilizer is still in there, even though we got rid of the tank. I thought it was kind of goofy when we were customizing it, but we'll go with the big tank. Yeah, it's still in there, so let's... I don't even know if it'll let us get rid of it, cause where where's the unload seed button here? I th I could have sworn it's like R one and triangle. There we go. Old seeder. Well, actually, it does not have. Interesting. Well, we're just gonna turn off the automatic application rate. We're gonna. Oh, let's see here. And make sure we got that as low as possible because I have no issue just applying a little bit of starter, but I don't want to apply the full recommended stuff right away. Just so we can keep this going so we might have to wait but wait a little bit before we find out whether or not this yeah so right there okay so the good news is already I don't think we need the duels for this but we're just gonna leave them on for this year that way we don't have to worry about as much wear and tear on the duels for this tractor because I'm sure we'll we'll need them for other points in this series but we'll we'll leave the liquid fertilizer on. We'll we'll run it dry and then we'll try try it again to see what the helper has to say. Cause I I honestly don't want to run any liquid fertilizer at all on the or any starter fertilizer I should say. Just cause we already got so much of our organic fertilizer going in, I just don't feel like it's worth us trying to apply even more of it yet. 
But right now we're compared to last year, we're cruising we're cruising along with this thing. I knew this Kubota was gonna be a good investment. I'm kinda kinda glad I went with it just because I I know in my uh, in my Elm Creek series that we weren't gonna be able to invest into one for quite a while, so I'm kinda glad at least I had a series where I could invest into one, and it kind of makes sense for this series a little bit as well. But we're, let's see here, get that little patch there. So I'm trying to, th actually, that's what I need to do. I gotta get the, I gotta get the other helper started on, on all getting cultivating done this morning as well. So that way we're, we're good to go next month. Mm. The corn starts sprouting. We'll have to get out here right away with the 7520 and start getting uh oh, start getting uh nitrogen applied for for the crops when they need it most for when they're getting when they start hitting that major growth season. I I still think that's the coolest thing ever. I right? like I said, I've never seen a cyclone planter before, so I didn't know those like little domes on the front of the seed boxes actually rotate like that. And just to have that animation in the game, I, I still think that's the coolest thing ever. So let's finish this field up, and then we'll hop into the what, the white, and we'll, we'll get that going as well, but this Kobodo is just handling this planter like, I'm dream, like a dream. Probably won't have to worry about upgrading tractors for a while, for a while or upgrading tractors for a while then. So I think the next planner we'll be heading for, and I'm hoping it comes out, or I, I probably should just go seek it out, is I'm, I'm kind of looking to keep up just the case planner. I was thinking of going into an early riser, because with this, I, we use a white planner on our farm, and I, and the case is going to be the closest to the same color coding as the, as the white, white, so I, that's kind of why I want to stick with Case for this series. But I think... Oh, let's see here. Knock this out. No, we're using quite a bit of seed here. Kind of, kind of shocking to me how fast we're going through seed right now. Because we used almost... We used close to 30% of our seed already for just this one little field here. So let's turn that off for now. Jump to this, and you know what? We'll we'll send them out back here first. We'll send the. It looks yeah, it looks like my, not my worst fear, but my fear of grass growing is already here. I don't know why I I was thinking we didn't have a good a tractor to handle it. I forgot we got the. We got the 7520 just sitting in the shed, so we can just hook that up to the hook to, hook that up to the haybine for now, and that'll just that'll be able to cover all the work we need. But we'll get this helper started here, and then we'll actually we'll get this helper started out, and then we're gonna grab, jump into the 7520. We're gonna get started with with getting the the grass field cut, so that way at least we can. If we don't get it chopped this month, we'll, we can work on it next month, hopefully. And we even if we don't get it chopped that month either, month either, at least the grass will begin the growth stage process, so that way we can try and maximize our grass field this year. Because I'm looking at trying to at least get three cuttings off, if not four. Because normally around here we can usually get about three cuttings per per hay crop, if not four, dependent the weather dependent is the best way to put it. The, like this year, we didn't really get to our first crop till mid to first cutting till mid to late June, and that is actually pretty late because we actually had quite a bit of rain up over here this year, so it we did not get quite as much cutting. Well, I shouldn't say that. We're probably more than likely only going to get three cuttings off most our fields here. Probably should load the, 
fill this up too. Could probably, I should have probably filled up most of these tractors over this winter, so yeah, our diesel barrel is going to start getting low here fast, but I think we should be fine for the most part for this season. I mean, hopefully I should say, I guess. And I was just thinking of this thought last episode, and I kind of wish I brought it up. We're going to start this way here. We'll, we'll mow a little bit of the edge here. So I was thinking that, you know, it's unfortunate that it snowed for us when it did. Because in reality, we probably could have gotten a lot better yielding oats if we had it in the ground in time. So the little story behind that is that the best yielding oats we've ever had off our farm is when we actually had it snowed on. And we ended up getting the oats drilled like really early April. April, the month of April, which is was a really good time for us, and oh, how's the best way to put it? So during that year, we were working on putting up a new shop for the farm, and I remember, I remember it to this day. We ended up getting snow probably about a week after we got our oats in, and we we were kind of concerned. Well, I should say, let me rephrase that. I was kind of concerned about it because I figure it was going to affect the oats quite a bit. But it actually didn't. It apparent one of the older farmers now that lived near us told us it's actually good for the, for the oats to get snowed on because it actually helps feed it more nitrogen. And it actually turned out to be like our best yield in oats that we've ever had off the farm. So that's that was kind of a really cool situation to hear about just think it like I was thinking about it last episode but I forgot to call, to kind of bring it up and mention it but it's it's something you wouldn't think about normally you would think oh well it's awfully cold it's going to be hard on the crop but instead the the crop actually benefit a lot benefit a lot more from having it be s snowed on versus versus just having a normal like good year to, so to speak and it's just it's just the, one of those weird facts that I never, like I said, you would never think about, but it does make sense a little bit when you think about how all the snow is holding nitrogen, and if you, if the crop gets snowed on, how all that nitrogen, natural nitrogen, just helps give that oats a little extra boost as well. But I figure I'd bring that, that up as well, but I think we're going to jump into the time lapse here. We're going to... We're going to get at least six passes around this field done before we attempt to see if the helper can run this disc bind like it should be. And if not, we might be spending a good portion of this episode mowing grass, which I I honestly was kind of hoping to run the planter for a while. But we'll see what happens, and we'll see you guys at the end of this.
All right, everyone, I think this is getting to the point where we're going to start wrapping up today's episode. I think we're going to be still in the month of April because next month we'll have side dressing to do. We'll have brain to do. We'll have so much to do that I think we're going to try and knock out the silage tonight since we since we got all the tillage done this evening. We're going to we're going to take the duels off the way, get the forge chopper hooked up, and we're going to I think we're going to head out when we come back next episode. We're going to head out and start raking and get all that silage that grass chop, bail, chopped, jeepers, I'm struggling right now. And then we'll get that thrown up the silo, and then next month we'll come back and finish up planting beans and then start side dressing and getting all the other stuff done. So it looks like, unfortunately, with the update that I did to the cyclone planter did not fix the issue. The helper still thinks the tank's always empty and such, and, well, with the fertilizer tank always being empty, it won't plant, so... We're going to have to figure out another option for a 12 row planner or maybe, maybe even jump up to a 16 row even though I'm I was kind of hoping to use this planner quite a bit longer but just with ha all the ground we have and such I don't I don't want to ha be forced to you to do everything myself especially when I want I could just easily hire the in-game helpers to do some of the work for us and I also know course place Course play is up on the mod hub as of today, but I also don't really want to set it up and then, like, stop a person from in the middle of planting and such to fin it, to do it myself. Just when I want to jump in and run it for a little bit myself, so it's it's one of those things that I'll probably get course play when we start getting a lot more ground. 
a lot lar and have a lot larger fields because right now our fields are are good size but I don't think they're the largest thing out there right now so we're gonna he take this back up to the yard and we also discovered that the uh, we can't hire a helper to run the moco the John Deere moco haybine as well so that's that's a good little tidbit of information as well so we we literally have to do our all our grass cutting ourselves until we up upgrade our hay buying situation which honestly I'm probably not gonna do for quite a while and if we do we might just buy a single side side hay buying and just a front mount one and we'll just have the use the 7520 as our full time as our full time uh, mowing tractor as well as our side dressing tractor the other thing I noticed too is this tractor is really struggling to pull this thing. There we go. Now it's starting to get up to speed. Well, we're going downhill, so that kind of helps it out. But, but like I said, this is where we're going to wrap up today's episode. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. If you're enjoying the content, please subscribe so you can stay up to date to the latest series. Above all else, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. And most of all, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.